Hi guys, how are you? I hope everybody is well and ready for the weekend. I definitely am. <laughs> okay, so today we're going to be doing a bit of listening. All right. Oh, flies. <laughs> okay, you're going to do a little bit of listening about a man who opened a restaurant in Chile, in Santiago, in Chile. Okay, so first of all, he's an English man opening up a restaurant in Chile. What do you think about that? What do you think about English food? Have you ever tried English food? Did you like it? Did you not like it? What are your expectations for English food? Hmm. Okay, so the first time we listen, okay, I'd like you to have a look at these five things. We have here Frederick's Cafe. This is the name of a cafe restaurant. A pub. Cheese. Oh man, I love cheese. Restaurant kitchen and pudding. Now, can you think of a synonym for pudding? I'm going to find a pen. Yep, we can say pudding or dessert. So remember, pudding or dessert is our third course. Starter, main and finally pudding. Pudding is usually sweet. Okay, so easy peasy. I'd like you to listen to the interview with the man who has opened the restaurant and which order does he talk about these things? Okay, which one does he talk about first, second, third, fourth and fifth? Okay, so listen and put these in the order he talks about them. All right. Let's listen. 1.5 Kevin, why did you decide to open a restaurant in Chile? I'd always wanted to have my own restaurant, and it would have been very expensive to do that in England. I'd visited Chile as a tourist and loved it, and I thought it would be a good place because Chileans are very pro-European and are quite open to new things, new ideas. So I opened Frederick's. Why did you call the restaurant Frederick's? Because Frederick's my father's name. It's my second name, too. What kind of food do you serve? Mainly international dishes like pasta, steak and fries, risotto, but we also do several English dishes as well. Were Chilean people surprised when they heard that an English chef was going to open a restaurant here? <laughs> yes, they were. Very. I think people don't usually expect the English to be good cooks. <laughs> Is, is your chef English? No, he's Chilean, but I've taught him to make some English dishes. What, what kind of English dishes do you have on your menu? Well, we're open in the morning, and we serve traditional English breakfasts, and then we have a lot of English desserts at lunchtime. Uh, for example, trifle. That's a typical English dessert made with fruit and cake and cream. And we do proper English teas in the afternoon, tea with cakes or sandwiches. Are the English dishes popular? Yes, especially the desserts and cakes. I think people here in Chile have a very sweet tooth. <laughs> uh, people who visit England always say that the food isn't very good or that you have to spend a lot of money to eat well. Do you agree? I think eating good food's never cheap. But I think that today the best place for a tourist to eat in England is in a pub, especially the ones called gastropubs, pubs which are also restaurants. These pubs are beginning to serve really good food that's not too expensive. I see. You said earlier that your chef was a man. Mm. Do you have any women working in your kitchen? Yes, one. But the rest are all men. In fact, I think that's typical all over the world. There are far more men than women in restaurant kitchens. Why do you think that is? I think there are a lot of reasons. Uh, the most important reason is probably the unsocial hours. Uh, most women don't want a job where you have to work until late at night. Uh, then there's the atmosphere. Women don't like being shouted at, and there's a lot of shouting in restaurant kitchens. It's also usually incredibly hot, and I think women don't like that either. And finally, is there any English food that you really miss here? The thing I miss most living in Chile is English cheese. I really miss Stilton which is a wonderful English blue cheese. Um, it's not as famous as some of the French cheeses, like Roquefort, but I think it should be. You should try it. I will. 
Kevin. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so which order did he talk about these things? Well, first he talked about Frederick's Cafe, number one. Yeah, this is his restaurant that he has opened in Chile. Okay, secondly, he talked about puddings and desserts. Did you hear the name of a specific pudding he talked about? Yeah, it's trifle. Oh, yeah, so trifle is cream, fruit, cake, custard. I don't like trifle, but a lot of English people love trifle. Okay, which one was number three then? What did he mention next? Yeah, pub. Very good. He was talking about pubs in England, especially gastro pubs where you can eat and drink. Number four then? was D, the restaurant kitchen. Yes, and the different people in it. And finally, he talked about cheese. Yeah, the cheese that he misses from England was called, Can you? did you get the name? Stilton. Yeah, he misses Stilton. Have you ever heard of Stilton, a blue cheese? Oh, it's delicious. I love it. Okay. So this time we're going to listen again, but now you're going to have some questions to answer about the listening. All right. So you need to listen carefully. I'm going to read the questions. You need to write the questions on some paper. OK, are you ready? There are seven questions in total. OK, so question one. Why did he decide to open a restaurant in Chile? Okay. Why did he decide to open a restaurant in Chile? Remember, at the moment, just write the question. When you have the questions, we're going to listen again to answer them. So only write the questions. Number two. Why did he call it Frederick's? Why did he call it, the restaurant, Frederick's? There you go. This is how you pronounce Frederick's. Number three. Why were Chilean people surprised when he opened his restaurant? Why were Chilean people surprised when he opened his restaurant? Number four, what English dishes does he serve in his restaurant? Are they popular? What English dishes does he serve in his restaurant? Are they popular? Now, remember, in English, we don't say plates. Ah, my favourite plate is... No, dishes. D-I-S-H-E-S. -S. Okay, number five then. Where does he recommend tourists eat in England? Why? Where does he recommend tourists eat in England? Why? Number six, then. How many women work in his kitchen? Why does he think there are so few women in restaurant kitchens? Yeah. How many women work in his kitchen? And why does he think there are so few women in restaurant kitchens? And finally, question seven. What English food does he miss most? OK, what English food does he miss most? All right, so now you have the seven questions. We're going to listen again. And can you answer the questions? 
OK, let's listen. 1.5 Kevin, why did you decide to open a restaurant in Chile? I'd always wanted to have my own restaurant, and it would have been very expensive to do that in England. I'd visited Chile as a tourist and loved it, and I thought it would be a good place because Chileans are very pro-European and are quite open to new things, new ideas. So, I opened Frederick's. Right. Why did you call the restaurant Frederick's? Because Frederick's my father's name. It's my second name, too. What kind of food do you serve? Mainly international dishes like pasta, steak and fries, risotto, but we also do several English dishes as well. Were Chilean people surprised when they heard that an English chef was going to open a restaurant here? <laughs> yes, they were. Very. I think people don't usually expect the English to be good cooks. <laughs> is, is your chef English? No, he's Chilean, but I've taught him to make some English dishes. What, what kind of English dishes do you have on your menu? Well, we're open in the morning, and we serve traditional English breakfasts, and then we have a lot of English desserts at lunchtime. Uh, for example, trifle. That's a typical English dessert made with fruit and cake and cream. And we do proper English teas in the afternoon, tea with cakes or sandwiches. Are the English dishes popular? Yes, especially the desserts and cakes. I think people here in Chile have a very sweet tooth. <laughs> Uh, people who visit England always say that the food isn't very good or that you have to spend a lot of money to eat well. Do you agree? I think eating good food's never cheap. But I think that today the best place for a tourist to eat in England is in a pub, especially the ones called gastropubs, pubs which are also restaurants. These pubs are beginning to serve really good food that's not too expensive. I see. You said earlier that your chef was a man. Mm. Do you have any women working in your kitchen? Yes, one, but the rest are all men. In fact, I think that's typical all over the world. There are far more men than women in restaurant kitchens. Why do you think that is? I think there are a lot of reasons. Uh, the most important reason is probably the unsocial hours. Uh, most women don't want a job where you have to work until late at night. Uh, then there's the atmosphere. Women don't like being shouted at, and there's a lot of shouting in restaurant kitchens. It's also usually incredibly hot, and I think women don't like that either. And finally, is there any English food that you really miss here? The thing I miss most living in Chile is English cheese. I really miss Stilton, which is a wonderful English blue cheese. Um, it's not as famous as some of the French cheeses, like Roquefort, but I think it should be. You should try it. I will. Kevin, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, now if you want to go back and listen again, no problem. This is not a memory test, okay? So go back and listen again if necessary to get your answers. But if you're happy with your answers, let's go through them, all right? So we have, first of all, number one, why did he decide to open a restaurant in Chile? Okay. Well, there were a few different reasons. The first was it's too expensive in England. Also, as a tourist, he loved Chile. And the final one is he said that the Chileans are very pro-European and open to new ideas. So a good place to bring English food to people who are open-minded. Good. Number two, then. Why did he call it Frederick's? Yes, it's the name of his dad. So Frederick is the name of his dad and it's also his middle name. Good. Number three then, why were Chilean people surprised when he opened his restaurant? Well, they were surprised because they didn't expect English people to be good cooks and to have good food. Yeah, so surprising. Oh, English people, English food. <laughs> um, the next one then, number four. What English dishes does he serve in his restaurant? So he mentioned a few. There was the English breakfast, my favourite. The desserts, like trifle. And also the traditional English tea. So that's when you have teapots of tea served with cake and sandwiches. 
if you have never had an English tea, I totally recommend it. It's amazing. And why are they popular? Well, they are popular. And he says it's because the people in Chile have a sweet tooth. Now, when we say that people have a sweet tooth, it means they enjoy eating sugary things, cakes, sweets, chocolate, things like that. Have you got a sweet tooth? Okay. Number five then, where does he recommend tourists eat in England and why? Well, he said pubs, especially gastro pubs, because you get really good food at a very good price. Yes, I would also recommend eating in pubs in England. They are the best. Number six then, how many women work in his kitchen? Just one. Yeah, one. And why does he think there are so few women in restaurant kitchens? Well, he gives three reasons. Personally, I think it's a bit patronising. First, unsocial hours. Women don't want to work late at night. Number two, the atmosphere. Because there's a lot of shouting and women don't like to be shouted at. Ugh. And finally, it's very hot in the kitchen and women don't like the heat. Personally, I think this is a very old type of opinion. Nowadays, women can work in a restaurant kitchen, no problem. Yes. And finally then, number seven, what English food does he miss most? Yeah, we said in the first exercise, the English cheese called Stilton, the blue cheese. All right. How did you do? Did you get everything correct? Well done. OK, so now we're going to have a quick look at some food vocabulary that is quite difficult to pronounce. OK, so I have here some vocabulary related to food and cooking. All right. But how do we pronounce these words? Have a look. What do you think? Try to pronounce them yourself and then we'll go through the pronunciation together. All right. So the first one, it's not knife. No. This one, the K is silent. Knife. Knife. Good. What do we use a knife for? Good. We use a knife for cutting food. Well done. Knife. Here, biscuit, not biscuit. No, the U is silent. Biscuit, biscuit. Good. The next one, salmon. Again, the L is silent. Salmon. Again, salmon. Good. Here, oh, I love these. Sausages. Sausages. Repeat again. Sausages. Good. Lettuce. Lettuce. Good. Remember, lettuce is the green part of a salad. Mm, I love lettuce. Okay, the next one. Sugar. Sh -sh -sh sugar good not sugar 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 well done the next one we have a silent letter again yogurt yogurt don't pronounce the h yogurt menu be careful with the stress the stress is at the start not at the end menu no Menu. Menu. Again, menu. Good. And finally, diet. Diet. Two syllables. Diet. Again, diet. Perfect. Well done. So your homework this week is to tell me something about your favourite restaurant. OK, write me a paragraph about your favourite restaurant. What type of food does it serve? Why do you like it? What is the atmosphere like? 
Okay, so one paragraph to tell me all about your favourite restaurant. Okay, and that's it for this week. So I'll see you next week. Bye, guys.